Howdy. My name is Nonoy Bandilio. I go by my name Nonoy and I'm the new Pulse Crafts Reader at NDSU. In the U.S., the two major regions for Pulse Crafts productions are the Northern Plains region of North Dakota and Montana and the Palouse region of Eastern Washington and Northern Idaho. In 2018, North Dakota was first for dry pea production, second for lentil, and third or fourth for chickpea production. Pulse crafts are becoming more and more important, particularly in, in the growing plant-based protein market. Have you heard of a Beyond Meat Burger? Have you guys tasted it? This is a, this is a plant-based body and uh, its major ingredient is the pea protein. So in each burger, it comes with uh, 20 grams of pea protein. So this product has a current market cap value of approximately $9 billion. So this is certainly a growing industry. So this, this, this uh, Beyond Meat Burger is now available in Costco. You should try it if you haven't tasted it yet and see how it compares with the uh, meat-based burger. Another product that is gaining traction in, in the market is the non-dairy milk called Riptin. Again, the exciting part of this is, is that the pea protein is, is a major ingredient. So these exciting opportunities have uh, sparked a renewed interest to develop new dry pea cultivars with the improved trade packages. And that will help to position the, the, the pulse industry to expand the current production level and meet expectation of the ever-growing plant-based protein market. Pulse production in North Dakota and Montana has grown substantially in the past years. However, almost all pulse cultivars being grown in North Dakota and nearby state have been developed by private companies or public uh, breeding programs outside North Dakota or even outside the U.S. So given the economic value of pulse crops in the region and the potential for expansion of the industry provided the impetus to establish the NDSU pulse breeding program. So, so this year, two new pulse cultivars from the program got approved for release by the North Dakota Agricultural Experiment Station. These cultivars were selected specifically for adaptation to North Dakota growing condition. And what we are, we are excited about is these two cultivars are also doing well in nearby states such as in Montana. All right, so I like to talk about the, the, the product profile of our first cultivar. We call it Indie Dawn. And this is this yellow pea, and this is the first yellow pea cultivar from the program. So it has high yield potential, not just in North Dakota, but also in Montana. It, it matures in approximately 95 days, which is perfect for North Dakota growing conditions. And and, and uh, yellow pea is, uh, is highly is highly being valued now because of its protein content. So the value of uh, Andy Don's uh, protein content is 24%, which is uh, competitive in the current market and, and making it a good choice for producers looking to get a premium price for a uh, high protein pea. And Andy Don has higher percentage of large uh, seeds when, when you compare it with uh, the predominant variety Agassiz. And uh, so other agronomic characteristic is it is resistant to lodging and uh, it is semi-dwarf and uh, it has semi-lipless characteristic which make it better than, uh, than uh, cultivars with the uh, lipid traits. In, in North Dakota, so what we found is the seed yield of Andy Don is uh, similar with the commercial variety Agassiz. However, in Montana, we found some uh, some yield advantage of Andy Don over Agassiz, where it had almost a seven percent yield advantage over Agassiz. So I think this is a good news. We also evaluated Andy Don for disease susceptibility. So when I moved uh, into the program in 2019, so we we evaluated Andy Don along with the commercial variety Agassiz to Posarium root rot. The trial was inoculated with multiple Posarium species, which are uh, which were all pathogenic to peas. This experiment was performed at uh, at Carrington Research Experiment Station, in collaboration with Dr. Michael Bunch. 
And our conclusion is that MD Don and Agassiz exhibited sim similar response to Bosarium root rot. In the same year, we also evaluated MD Don for uh, Ascochyta blight. So as you can see in this table, this, this, uh, this table was based on an experiment under high Ascochyta blight pressure. You can see that ND Don developed a more severe polar symptoms than Agassiz, though seed yield between ND Don and Agassiz are similar, or you would say not significantly different. Though there were limited incidents of Ascochyta blight in Pilpi in North Dakota in the past years, we are currently working with extension faculty in plant sciences and plant pathology to, to have information available for uh, growers on management of Ascochyta, Ascochyta blight in Pilpi. The second cultivar that I like to talk about is Andy Crown. Andy Crown is the, the first Kabuli chickpea cultivar from the program. And th th this was selected specifically for adaptation to North Dakota conditions, but uh, it seems to be adapted well in the state of Montana. So the product profile of Andy Crown indicates that it has high yield potential in, in both North Dakota and, and Montana. It matures in approximately about uh, 98 days. And one of the selling uh, uh, characteristic of Andy Crown is its uh, large seeds. So what we found is Andy Crown had greater percentage of large seeds and higher a thousand seed weight than the, the predominant variety CDC Frontier. So in, in the current market for chickpeas, the premium price increases as the seed size increases. Chickpea production is adversely affected by Ascochyta blight, a fungal disease. To date, uh, a smaller number of uh, acreages of chickpea production in North Dakota and even in Montana is associated with a limited genetic resistance to Ascochyta blight. So, so consequently, different uh, developing cultivars with uh, improved genetic resistance to Ascochyta blight has become an important breeding objective in the U.S. chickpea breeding programs. So the good news is ND Crown is moderately resistant to Ascochyta blight. So looking on this table, you can see that under moderate pressure of Ascochyta blight, as observed in 2018 uh, Williston experiment, ND ground uh, has a lower disease severity than Sierra, but perform almost similarly with Frontier and Orion. And what we are, we are excited about is that under high disease pressure, we found that ND ground displayed significantly lower severity to, to Ascochyta blight than CDC Frontier. CDC Orion and, and Sierra. So if you if you note on this experiment, you could see that Sierra had 96 to 100 percent severity in 2017 and 2019 uh, Carrington experiments, indicating the presence of a of a high disease pressure during the experiments. We are excited about the future of pulse crops. So move, moving forward, our approach is threefold. First, uh, the way we, we do breeding is based on the need of our stakeholders. And when I say stakeholders, that includes farmers, growers, and uh, processors, and, uh, and, 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 and use uh, consumers, and all the people involved in the, in the market knowledge chain. One of our goals is uh, to shorten the breeding process from uh, from 10 years to 7 to 8 years. And so to do that, we leverage a combination of new technology for breeding. We, we evaluate speed breeding that permits breeders to turn over generations and reduce the length of the breeding cycle. We test genomic selections that allow predictions of new breeding lines using only the genomic information. And we also explore the utility of unmanned aerial vehicles for disease resistance screening. So we we know which ones are best for use, uh, which ones are best to use for selection. 
Uh, finally, I, I would like to acknowledge the support provided by the Northern Pulse Grower Association. Uh, their support is, uh, is critical to the success of the program and uh, we really value, uh, we really value continue working closely with our stakeholders. Mm -hmm.